This is a map of matter in the universe. And that's allowed astronomers to produce this map of how it's spread across the expanse of space. Welcome to the eighth episode of The Real Crisis in Cosmology. I'm Eric Lerner, chief scientist at LPP Fusion. On May 27th, the BBC and other outlets reported that the dark matter map created by the Dark Energy Survey had created a dark mystery for cosmology. And this seemed to be contradicting existing theories, which was getting some people pretty upset. Building on the work of Einstein, Carlos Frank was among a group of scientists that developed the current model of cosmology. Hearing now that there may be something not quite right with the theory, well, it's very disconcerting, it's very alarming, and in a way, frightening. If you actually look at what the papers say, at first glance it seems puzzling why this is a big deal. Because the predictions, predictions based on the Big Bang theory of the cosmic microwave background about how smooth the universe should be, were only off by a few percent. And in terms of probability, this was a little more than a two sigma result. Um, a result you could expect by chance, maybe one time in 70. So what's the big deal? Well, if you look at this in the context of what's been happening in cosmology over the last five years, you do see why it is a big deal. Because this all deals with the Big Bang theory of the cosmic microwave background, that very gentle 2.7 degree bath of radiation that fills the universe. The fact is, and this is not widely advertised, but it is what is concerning them, all but one of the predictions of the Big Bang theory of the cosmic microwave background have been demonstrated to be wrong, to be in clear conflict with observations. This new result was sort of one more card on a very high stack of cards that are saying this theory is plain wrong. The bright areas are where dark matter is most concentrated, and it's here that galaxies form. But the map is not what astronomers expected. The matter should be slightly more clumped together. Instead, it's smoother than predicted by Einstein's theory of general relativity, which helps determine how the matter should have spread out after the Big Bang. If the structures in this map are smoother than we expect them to be, which is what the results seem to hint at, it means that Einstein's theory is wrong. So you might think that that's a bad thing, that maybe, oh no, physics is broken. But it, for physicists, it's extremely exciting because it means that we can find out something new about the way the universe really is. That's apart from the fact that they're comparing it with what they feel is a map of dark matter. And back in episode four of this series, we gave a large number of observational reasons why dark matter doesn't even exist. But for this episode, let's put that aside and just concentrate on the Big Bang theory of the cosmic microwave background. This theory has been developed over a number of decades, but it came to pretty firm uh, form by around 1980. Now, initially, in the 60s, Scientists just said, well, if you have this hot big bang, as the universe expands, it will cool off and you'll have some sort of radiation, a, a microwave background radiation left over. Initially, they guessed way off on how much radiation would be observed, a factor of 10,000. But once it was observed in the mid-60s, then they said, OK, well, this is proof that the Big Bang happened. But they had no, uh, 
quantitative predictions about it. Well, later on, it became clear that this was a very smooth, even isotropic background. And scientists realized that the Big Bang Theory actually didn't predict that. Big Bang Theory says that the universe expanded so rapidly that parts in the sky that would not have time to ever come in contact with each other during the Big Bang and thus to reach thermal equilibrium, come to the same temperature, they would be very far apart in the sky. So the sky would look like a patchwork. It wouldn't be a single brightness as was observed of the cosmic microwave background. It would be like a abstract art sort of splotchy drawing. Well, that wasn't observed at all. Instead of the predicted sky with totally different microwave brightness or intensity in each direction, scientists observed almost exactly the same brightness or intensity in all directions. So this did not look much like a confirmation of the Big Bang until in 1980 the theory was expanded by adding the idea of inflation. Inflation was an ad hoc idea invented by uh, Alan Guth. And that idea was that there was an earlier Big Bang that went so exponentially fast that it expanded a very tiny piece that had already reached equilibrium to cover the whole sky. Well, there was no proof that this inflation force exists or ever existed, but it did resolve this problem. Now, with inflation, the theory made certain concrete predictions about what we would observe in the small fluctuations of ripples in brightness, which were about one one thousandth of a percent that did exist in the CMB. They're shown here, greatly exaggerated. One big prediction that it made was that overall, with certain specific exceptions, these ripples should be random, should be Gaussian, as scientists would say. The initial observations seemed to indicate this was true, but in the 21st century, as more powerful satellites observed the microwave background, a satellite called WMAP and another one called Planck, they found that this idea of Gaussian randomness simply wasn't true. This is a map of the intensity of the cosmic microwave background, the CMB, on the sky. The way cosmologists map things on the sky looks a bit peculiar. The whole sky is portrayed as an ellipse. In this map, the authors, Schwartz et al., are using galactic coordinates, so the horizontal line is the plane of the Milky Way galaxy, the line that the Milky Way traces on our sky. The vertical line is north-south relative to the galaxy. The black line labeled ecliptic is the plane of the solar system, the path in the sky that the planets move along. The red areas show higher intensity, the blue areas lower intensity. The variations are shown on the scale as micro-kelvins, millions of a degree Kelvin, because with black body radiation, higher intensity the same as higher temperature. And we'll talk more about black body radiation in future episodes. This map is smoothed out to emphasize the variations in intensity on the largest scales on the sky. What you see does not look at all like the random pattern that the Big Bang inflation theory predicted. It looks pretty well ordered. The red and blue patches are all in a line and that completely contradicts the prediction that they're random. Now this pattern started to be observed in the early years of this century and was confirmed by 2016, 
five years ago. So this was a big contradiction of the Big Bang theory of the cosmic microwave background. Cosmologists were really puzzled by these strange patterns on the sky of the CMB. The chance that this is just because of our peculiar view of a really random pattern is only five in a million. It's not what you really want to bet your theory on. This is just the start of observational contradiction. We'll continue with many more in the next episode, coming soon. In the meantime, visit wefunder slash Fusion, where you can invest in fusion research. If you can't support the research by investing directly, subscribe to any of the links below. Share, like us, tune in, and thanks for watching.